They say time heals all wounds. Well, it's been nearly seven months and it's not healing very quickly. Don't know that it ever will. But anyway. As Gangstar Sample says, I, I, I guess right now we should start the show. Obviously, you can tell that's crappy scrambled eggs. <laughs> Very watery scrambled eggs and bacon. My breakfast at the after hotel. And that's what the spread looks like. And that's what the weather looks like, which is pretty damn impressive. I was taken aback by how there were so many cacti and aloe vera plants. And those aloe vera plants are definitely beneficial. Especially considering the heat and what you'll need afterwards. I found the look of this particular kids sort of restaurant play area place amusing. Partly because of the fact that I have some Australian family and I really like kangaroos. They taste delicious. The imagery is always cool and fun. Rosita la calidad hace la diferencia. I love this mural of the old lady right near the gas station. And the WhatsApp advertising everywhere to learn Portuguese quickly. Una verdoria. I take a lot of random shots. Plaza Madame Guri, that's a public square, recognizing the renowned Polish French scientist, first woman to win a Nobel Prize. And I'm enjoying the ways they're decorating the buildings, the espacio lúdico. I also like, I also found it funny the way the cars would be parked. Some would be behind a simple gate, some just completely on the pavement, abstracting people. There's the, I didn't realize that was just an ad. I thought that was a university at first. The very interesting no-go zones. Some old guy in a reflection. And a guy cycling down the middle. I guess that's what it's designed for. <laughs> at the bike path. The very interesting outside designs and buildings and the political statements and welcoming people. El Club Sportivo. I had had a conversation with my brother and my dad about seeing the Estadio Centenario, which for those that don't know a lot about football and I don't know that much about football. It's a very historic stadium. It's known for hosting the first FIFA World Cup in 1930. It's got a seating capacity of about 60,000. It was designed by Juan Antonio Scasso and it was built over the course of 1929 and 1930. Monumento al Dr. Atilio Narancio, who was the president of the Uruguayan Football Association. He was known as the father of victory as the Uruguayan football team sought a gold medal in the 1924 Olympic Games. And of course, I just decided it might be a good time to grab a selfie with 20. And there's a lovely bear tree struck by the heat, casting its shadow extremely well. Broken bottle of wine, symbolic as to how I was feeling at that point. Well, still am actually. And now I'm just touring around the stadium, having a look at it seeing whether it's an impressive building or just another building, but also bearing in mind that it was the first to host the World Cup. Here's a couple of shots of different parts of the stadium. I don't think there were any teams actually playing that day, but I took these photos to try and see if we could determine the scale. one of the various gates to enter the stadium. 
it was interesting seeing them putting up the ad. You could see the massive, you could see the massive tarp that they're using. Which I thought was kind of a cool image. Tourists being shuttled to take their signature shots alongside the 36 degrees and everyone's posing outside of the sign. Including a certain someone. Can you guess who it is yet? Very dry banana peel. And I had to get someone else to take a photo because I was thinking they could do a better job. And I think maybe it was just the subject that they were photographing. Cycling along the middle again. And that is El Monumento de los Campeones del Mundo, which has plaques talking about all the World Cup champions subsequent to Uruguay. To a certain degree, it stops at a certain point. And then you've got England in 1966, there you go. And that's walking around Parque Batillier, with various parks within there. Nunca bebes y conduzca. Don't drink and drive. More ads for a parapsychologist. And as you can clearly see, I'm on Dr. Américo Ricaldoni, El Monumento al Discobolo Siglo, which is the monument to the discus thrower of the century. And Plaza Italia is in Punta Carretas. It's a pretty busy road. Looking a bit more around Plaza Italia. And a few shots of the monument Italia. Overlooking Avenida Italia. I thought it was pretty impressive until I went to Avenida Nueve de Julio in Buenos Aires. Political messages being put everywhere, and there's more of a look at the way the city's laid out. Had to get my merienda in adición de azucares, because it was getting pretty hot at that point. Coffee is the new black. I wondered why they had this weird thing. Lista de precios. El Club de la Papa Frita, the Fry Club. This was just a bilingual school, but I thought it was a nice, interesting and imposing building. Por seguridad, basically close the door. I like the way this building looked. And of course I'm continuing along. Taking in the sights as I walk up Jose Garibaldi. And the interesting artwork. Interesting said in inverted commas. I mean you, you can judge for yourself. More graffiti of protest and speed monitoring. Oh, and everywhere has to have their gluten free stuff at the moment. And the barbed wire as I took the back streets continuing towards my destination. Viva Colombia Insurrecta. A little football club over there. I like the way they had this design on the outside of their place.
random logs propped up against buildings. It's acá. An old car that could do with a tune up. And an exhausted dog sitting with its owner as she spoke away on the phone. She was very friendly though. Bustling side streets. Well, side streets, they're not really that bustling right now, but you can see with the flow of the motorbikes and the cars, there were people there. <laughs> I love their facial expressions. Passing by the basketball club. And I absolutely loved the way that was done. And now I'm approaching Mercado Agricola de Montevideo which is a very well-known famous historic market originally built in 1906 and there was a lineup outside which i wasn't quite sure what they were lining up for whether they were lining up to get into the market or not so i did what i usually do which is i just went to the front of the line to check and it seemed like they were lined up for a shop so i just jumped in the market for some reason i took lots of photos of the sign but that kind of captures people's facial expressions pretty well lots of very colourful displays and fruits and a nice cobblestone floor. Plenty of places to grab a drink or some food. Or ice cream. Grandma's cooking today basically. A nice open air area with, of course, a stage. It would have to have a stage. And the football has to be played as well. But just a food court like most others. Chivitos lo de Pepe, Coco Rico. And then, of course, a bar with books in the middle of a market. What more could you want? Well, apparently, Juan's oven. A few of the desserts that are available. Feliz San Valentin. It was Valentine's Day within the next few days. The eggs for sale at the fruit and vegetable shop. And of course, another thing dedicated to mum, lots of crystal and quartz. A cat dealing with the heat, just perched on its shelf, taking a nap. A cat nap, if you will. See what I did there? And people scrolling different messages into the side of the building. Different political statements. Oh, and of course the... Vaccine conspiracy theorists aren't restricted to North America and Europe, they're global. I'm on the way to Palacio Legislativo, but I'm taken aback by some of these murals and infumable. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to park there. Walking along with those great political displays. And people just perched outside of very, very crowded parked areas, relaxing, shooting the shit with their friends. Relaxing in the shade, enjoying the day.
And that's the Monumento a la Madre, dedicated to celebrating motherhood and their role in society. And there we can see the Legislative Palace, the Palacio Legislativo, which is a gloriously huge building. I found this random shoe interesting. An event space. So Palacio Legislativo is the seat of the General Assembly of Uruguay. Designed by Italian architects Vittorio Miano and Gaetano Moretti and it was inaugurated in 1925. And it's located in Aguada. It takes up an entire city block. There you go, you get to see what statues look like. And this is the Esplanade of the Legislative Palace, or Palacio Legislativo. That's the perspective of one of the neighbouring streets. Very impressive building, as I say. I walked around the perimeter and enjoyed the statues. Avenida Libertador Brigadier General La Valleja. This is a mural of Mario Benedetti Farujia, who is an Uruguayan journalist and a novelist, and a member of the generation of 45. Now entering Plaza Selman Michelini y Héctor Gutiérrez Ruiz, near the intersection of Reconquista and Juan Carlos Gómez. It's named after two Uruguayan politicians who were assassinated in Buenos Aires in 1976 during the military dictatorship in Uruguay. I love these pieces of art, the tango feel. And that's another look at the legislative palace with a bit of art in between. The security outside the Artigas building, and I love that reflection. Viejo Silva, with a certain person in the reflection. I'm not going to tell you who. Now I'm continuing along my way. Noting, of course, the motorbikes passing by. And another mural celebrating what women do. Agraciada. Watching the side streets, looking at the looking at the Spanish bakery. The new Spanish. Walking along Avenida Agraciada and taking in this dedication, this tribute, searching for truth and justice of some missing men. A few police across the street, and then the Anglo. Men at work, gente en obra. Cool pink rooftops. Interesting artistic doorways. Alright, so I found this funny because they were talking about homemade fresh cooking. It was healthy. And if you look, it's a ton of cheese and it doesn't look like it's particularly healthy for you. But nevertheless, definitely seems home cooked. <laughs> now I was heading to Palacio de la Luz because supposedly there was a Jose Artigas 
museum there, which was, it said temporarily closed, but I thought I'd have a look, and I didn't really get too much luck with that. But the Palacio de la Luz is an impressive and cool looking building. It was constructed in the 18th century, around, I think, 1791. And it was originally built as a military fortress known as the Fortaleza de San Miguel. At the moment, it's the headquarters for the Ministry of Education and Culture of Uruguay. It's also got various exhibits inside. It's a Jose Artigas statue just outside. Uruguayan hero. Very much a prominent part of their society. And an old rundown car. Well, an old dusty car. I don't know if I'd call it rundown. That guy seems a bit tired, or bored, one of the two. A roped off classic. So it's at this point that I decided, you know what? I know well enough where I am, which I didn't. I'm just gonna walk. So I just started walking. And I deliberately got lost and saw Bake Off ads. And again, massive, beautiful murals. It was this sort of military type vehicle parked randomly on a side street? Aguala Park. So you can tell I'm in Aguala. 5G. Conspiracy theories abound. They're trying to implant us all. And again, the artwork was just superb. People gathered waiting for the bus, which is a phenomenally interesting image. And the shadows being cast by the building behind and the abandoned station. Broken slabs and daunting imagery. Feels sort of like a horror movie set. La Paz. The Estación Central, and it started in 1897. It was the main railway station for a long time, designed by an English engineer called John Knight. But at the moment, it's closed. It doesn't actually run. It's not fully operational, but they still use it for exhibitions and concerts. I was a bit dehydrated and hungry, so I quickly grabbed myself a pomelo and a very bad yogurt sort of drink and downed that and kept going. You go one direction, you gotta go the other, you gotta return. I read my mum's name there, Vivian. I got someone to take a photo of me beneath the street sign for La Paz because of a connection to mum, because that's where she grew up. In Bolivia, of course, not in Montevideo. Me in a reflection. Joaquin Cluver went missing. people walking on the other side of the construction. So of course, knowing me, I walked right through it. After of course waiting until the lights were green, like a good non-Argentinian. Construction work is hard at work. And a contemporary art space.
Stop. Centro Cultural Miguelete. People going on about their work day, cleaning up the streets. Passing by a basketball court. El virus es el capital. And now I'm on the way towards Tres Cruces, walking along Dr. Salvador Ferrer Serra, I'm trying to determine Burger King's Mega King selection, while that guy glares at me going, what are you doing? What are you taking a photo of? It's a Burger King. And of course, Johnny Walker being written anywhere is something that I need to photograph, as well as hustlers selling what they're selling. Yo amo Uruguay at Tres Cruces Mall. <laughs> uh, gotta love, well, everywhere. It's a shopping mall, people. It's a shopping mall. No, Tres Cruces is in Tres Cruces. And it's at the intersection of Avenida 18 and Boulevard Artigas. Some interesting public arts work. Small cross right there. Monument to Pope John Paul. And that's commemorating Pope John Paul's visit to Uruguay. Random pair of trousers displayed. And a guy looking a lot like the statue he's leaning up against. Smaller football club as I'm walking back to the after hotel. Small training grounds. An interesting beaten up Jeep. Or maybe it's not a Jeep, it's, it's a beaten up old car. With some cool frames within frames as I walked along here. Saw a couple of parrots being kept as pets in cages too. And people really voicing their discontent at things. And concerns. Bodetato mini market. Very green and luscious areas. Both in terms of the paint and in terms of the place. And then over to the Montevideo shopping district at night in order to look around. Notice Burger King. And McDonald's going head to head with McDonald's, advertising their premium tasty right against Burger King. Tostado Café. Montevideo Simple Contigo. Always with you. And then the barbed wire, which seemed to top every building. I'm assuming the break-ins must be rampant if they've got barbed wire everywhere. The night sky. An old 20 peso bill, a new 20 peso bill. One lone light on. And I'm walking because I need a beer. It's 
spotted DA monks, which mum and dad always joked about, but they always spoke about how nice the bottle was, and the bottle is really nice if you get it in certain places, but this was a fairly bland one. That's 69. William Lawson's whiskey. They had an assortment. A funky tree in the dark. Graffiti. And want of a day at night. The bodega was called because the family that ran it sat outside and relaxed until a customer came in, then they followed them in, then went back out. 